Welcome back. This is week three, part three of our shear with respect to Rabbi Akiva and the tragic death of his Talmidim. It is disappointing to, to once again not be able to learn in person, but I guess this platform does allow, uh, as we have to always see the silver lining and, the, and the, the positives of everything, it does allow people that are sometimes not able to, to make the Wednesday night shear to at least be able to learn with us uh, over the computer. So um, welcome to those people and welcome to the to the regulars. Part three of Rebbe Akiva. We're going to begin once again just with um, the four questions. Pesach is uh, is a week from tonight, exactly a week from tonight, so four questions, four questions. We had the famous Gemara in Yevamos, and we asked four questions. First of all, why does the Gemara say that specifically 12,000 pairs of Talmud and Rebbe Akiva were killed in this horrible Magefa, in this horrible plague? Why also did it tell us that Specifically, the death and the plague took place between Pesach and Sukkot. Third question is, it's amazing. They, they, the reason the Gemara gives is that they that the students weren't, they, they didn't give kavod to each other, yet we know that um, Rabbi Akiva is the person who said, that I should love my friend as myself, is the, the you know, the paramount principle the identifying principle of the Torah is that Klal Gadol Torah, and finally, they didn't honor each other. Yet they got killed. The the punishment seems to far outweigh the crime or the transgression in this in, in this um uh, in this case. So I promised an answer. We went through different stories and different gemaras that tried to paint the specific picture of of the greatness of Rabbi Akiva the previous two weeks, and now we're going to try to come to an answer and answer these four questions. Um, uh, and in order really to resolve all the questions, we, we need to posit that the tragic loss of these 24,000 students prompted Rev Akiva to really make a, a radical change in his entire educational methodology. He, he as, we, as we saw, attracted droves of students of Talmudim from all over the place, right? You know, 24,000 students maybe nowadays is still considered to be a, a many, many Talmidim. Okay, if, a re, if you're a Rosh Hashiva in YU, in Panovich, in the Mir, so you have thousands of students, and, and, and you know you have 10 years, you're a Rebbe for a Rosh Hashiva for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. So you've probably had thousands of Talmidim, and now maybe via the internet. So there are people that I listen to their Shirurim all the time, they don't even know that I'm a Talmid, right? But back in the days of Rebbe Akiva, to have 24,000 students, it must mean that there were people that were constantly flocking to him, and there were then he was also all over the place. So there were two things: he was all over the place teaching in many, many different locations, as as we've seen, as we said, and also it must be that just he was magnetic, and people were trying to follow him all over the place. And we see that there was there must have been this this thirst, this hunger to 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 drink at um uh, at the knowledge and the greatness of Rabbi Akiva. And so what was his methodology? He wanted to, he, he sought, I guess, to, to, to harness the, 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 the student's desire to come and to learn and to be great. And so what he felt, the Gemara Baba Basra tells us that we know that from the, from the Aseris Hadibros, a person can't be, can't, can't be jealous, should make their, be, make, make, make their um, best efforts to not be jealous, lo tachmod, I shouldn't, I shouldn't want to drive your car and you shouldn't want to live my house and I shouldn't be jealous of your looks. I shouldn't be jealous of, of, of your, your singing talents, your artistic talents, except there's one exce- exception to that. The Mormon Baba Basra tells us, kinat sofrim tar bechachma, that competition amongst tamidei chachamim and almost like jealousy amongst tamidei chachamim, it motivates greater achievement. It pushes people to be even better. So before the students died, Rabbi Akiva headed this like Torah learning enterprise of, of, of massive proportions. There were tens of thousands of students that they were situated in many locations and students flocked to Rabbi Akiva in unpre- unprecedented numbers due to his unparalleled greatness. But he sought to almost team them up, to almost partner them together. They're all, they're, that's why the Gemara says they're Dafka 12,000 12, pairs of them, not all, simply 24,000, because his system was to pair off the Talmidim in some type of almost like in a healthy competitive environment where they would seek almost to like surpass each other in order to achieve, to achieve 
the you know the, the attention and the, ad, the admiration of their Rebbe, wh- whether Rebbe Akiva was close or whether he was in some remote low location, and he he wanted to like create this Torah center of uh, of, un- of unparalleled quality and unparalleled quantity. The people were just supposed to be massive, massive, massive Talmidei Talmidei Chachamim. And it, it, it was possible, he probably even, he could he dreamed of, I guess like the Mishnah says, that you're supposed to teach many, many students. And Rabbi Akiva felt this way. But he felt this way, he teamed them together, and that they should motivate, they should push, they should, they should push one another to greater and greater heights. Except, I think, and this might be a little bit of a drastic thing to say, but I don't think, I think, I think it's true, this system sort of failed. The system failed because... Because Rabbi Akiva was all over the place, he wasn't able to closely monitor the students. He, he, he was almost spread thin amongst all the different yeshivot and all the multitudes of all the different students. And the, 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 all this competition almost led, as we sometimes see, to like a breakdown of respect. And a breakdown. That's why Shalonagu kavod zebazeh, or zelazeh, to the extent that Hashem felt that, you know what? The situation was intolerable. You can't have people that are massive Tamidei Chachamim, that represent Torah, but don't act with the Derech Eretz that the Torah, the Torah almost demands. There's a fabulous Gemara. I remember Rabbi Simon in Why You Taught Me This Gemara, and he taught me this, this Pshat. The Gemara tells us that a Talmud Chacham with a stain on his clothing is Chay of Misa. He's, well, he should be killed. He should be killed? The stain on his clothing? Come on, it's Shabbos. He's, he's eating cholent. He spills. He spills a little bit of wine on his shirt. He's, we, we, we're going to kill the guy? That the, the Gemara can't be taken at, at face value. The Me'iri, one of the Rishonim, says a beautiful pshat. He says that a Tamil Chacham with a, stone, with a stain, not on his clothing, but it's representative of a stain on his midos. If you have a Tamil Chacham with a stain on his midos, he is misrepresenting the Torah. And if you're misrepresenting the Torah, if you know a lot and people look up to you and they're asking you questions and you write, you're writing Svarim, but you're your midos, your character traits don't match that. So it's a misrepresent- misrepresentation of everything the Torah stands for and everything HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to be in this world and wants the world to, to, to fill up. So th- this situation was completely intolerable that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to, almost, had to basically get rid of them and that the world couldn't exist like that. And really what he was saying is that, is that advanced Talmud Torah, high High-end Talmud Torah, if it's not partnered with, if it's not teamed with, 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 with you know, almost like um, uh, pristine midos, that might be okay in, in a secular environment, right? That might be okay on a college campus. That might be okay with PhDs, but not with Talmudei Chacham. If these people are entrusted in, in giving over the Masorah, if these people are are, are entrusted with giving over the tradition from generations to generations, then that is, it, it's a non-starter and it's got to stop. So Rabbi Akiva, I believe, pivoted and he, and, and, and he moved and his, his educational methodology was, um, uh, he, he, he augmented it a little bit and he then created this, 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 this almost yeshiva of these five very, very close Talmidim that we mentioned in the, in the first year. And in this first year, there was only one location, and they saw Rabbi Akiva every single day. And they learned from him, and they learned through him. The Gemara tells us that that sometimes you learn more from seeing a person, from seeing how a person gets dressed in the morning, speaks to their wife, you know, washes their hands, gets dressed. That the way a person acts all day, that's really how you can learn from them more. So it was a smaller yeshiva, and they were able to see Rabbi Akiva every day, how he spoke to people, how he dealt with, how he dealt with when he was frustrated. What, what, what did Rabbi Akiva look like, look like that? And ultimately, those were the five Talmidim that, that basically tra- transmitted t- Torah and the entire, pretty much the entire corpus of, of the Mishnah. With those five main Talmidim, they're quoted over a thousand, over thousand times through all of the Shisha Sidre. Mishnah, and in such an environment, this smaller, close-knit environment, the Talmidim could thrive. They would prosper not only intellectually, but almost as 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 kind, as thoughtful people in their in their own right. And the fact that the you know, we say, um, uh, at, at the, we we've mentioned in an earlier shiurim that when Rabbi Akiva was killed, his Talmidim were there. His Talmidim came. Not everyone agrees. And if you look at the Rishonim, not everyone uh, agrees that they were there. But 
But many, of, but but the Gemara seems at face value that those Tamidim had an everlasting relationship and Kesher with Rabbi Akiva. That even there, when he was when he was being you know brutally brutally killed by the by the Romans, they were there. And this it's almost like a testament to the close relationship that Rabbi Akiva built with his uh, with, with these Tamidim. Tamidim. And furthermore. Um, uh, it was really only after, I think the next piece of this is that only after this, this tragedy did Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva was always, he was always a Klal Gadol and he was always a, a, a Midos machine and a Mensch par, par excellence. But I think it was almost after, or, or sorry, only after this tragic event where Rabbi Akiva shifted and kept on driving home this message. He began emphasizing the importance of the high quality, you know, midos and being adam lechaveira with your personal interactions. We keep on stressing that the ahafta l'reacha kamocha. Think about it. Rashi, if you look at the pasuk in Vayikra on the ahafta l'reacha kamocha, so Rashi's only comment there is that this is Amar Rabbi Akiva zek klal gadol b'torah. Rashi is a pashtan. Rashi, he'll quote midrashim. He very often quotes midrashim, but there to add to the understanding of the pasuk. Right, either from a literal sense or from a more of a midrashic sense, but they have they, they always come to help you understand the pasuk. When Rashi says, "Okay, Rabbi Akiva thinks that this is the most important pasuk in the Torah," what's that adding to my understanding of the pasuk? It's a commentary on the pasuk, but it doesn't come it doesn't come to to tell me or to teach me the pasuk better. It doesn't explain what lureyacha means. Or, or what does kamocha mean? It's it's a separate, almost like outside explanation that's very rare, very rare in Rashi's commentary on the uh, on the Torah. But I think that Rashi Dafka goes out of his way to say that. Why? Because that was an emphasis that that that, that Rabbi Akiva almost learned. Not didn't learn it, but he stressed it. It became like it, almost like his raison d'etre later on. Later on in in life, I, I I did fail to mention. I want to say it. I want to say it. we did give already one shot, but this Shabbos I saw another reason. Why was it? Sorry, why was it that Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva's Tamidim needed to needed needed to die? So it's a fascinating. I, I, this Shabbos I was learning this beautiful sefer um, uh, called the Olam Hamidos. I think Art School just translated it uh, called Olam Hamidos by a Rabbi Kestenbaum or Kahneman, something from from Waterbury, Connecticut, I believe. So he quotes a Gemara. He quotes a Gemara in Kesubis. At the very end of Kesubis, the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Tov hamal bin shinayim lechavero yoter mimashkeyu chalav. Rabbi Yochanan says that it's greater. Greater is when one, greater is when one displays the, the whiteness of his shinayim, of his teeth, to his friend, lechavero to his friend, yoter mimashkeyu chalav. It, that's greater to almost show the whiteness of your teeth to your friend than even to give your friend, to offer your friend milk to, to drink. What in the world does that mean? So the Maral writes, the Maral explains this Gemara that obviously milk is a life source. Okay, We just say water keeps you alive. But obviously we know that a baby, a baby lives based on milk. So milk is there. To, it, it, it's the life source of a person. It keeps a person alive. Biochan saying that what? The Gemara then says... The whiteness, the smile of your mouth. When a person smiles, you smile to a person, you, you build up a person, you give honor and respect to a person, you value them, you show, hi, I'm happy to see you, I, I, I see you, I value you're an important person, right? I say that to a person, that's even greater than actually giving them physical milk. So we're seeing that showing respect to a person is like giving them chiyas, is giving them life. So he quotes the Maharal, the Kosov Maharal, and he quotes our Gemara. When you, give, when you give honor, you act in accordance with honor to your friend, that's etzem achayim, that's the essence of life. And with this, Gemara in Ksubis, we could explain the harshness of the, of the um, uh, punishment with respect to the Talmide Rabbi Akiva. Lama meitu Talmide Rabbi Akiva al shalom nagu kavad asks our question. Why? She, well, now he answers based on the Gemara and Subis. If we just said that giving kavod to your friend is like giving him life, here what happened? The Talmidim, the the, the chavrusas, they took life. They were shalom nahagu kavod zelazeh. So since they took life, 
a person takes life, a person murders someone, chas v'shalom, of course they should be. It's a mida k'neged mida. It's a mida k'neged mida. Nitlu chayim mehem. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu took their lives as well. But we were in the middle and we saying that, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is now, is, is now pivoting and now he's stressing this midos tovos to his Talmidim. And you see, I'm not sure if what I'm saying, if I'm about to say is 100% correct because I didn't do, I didn't, I didn't, um, uh, I didn't count all the times. But if you look in the Gemara in, if you look in the Gemara in, uh, sorry, in the Mishnah in Pirkei Avos, at the very end of the third parak, I'm not sure if this happens with any of the other Tanayim. But Rabbi Akiva is quoted in four, in four consecutive, in four consecutive Mishnayas. Four consecutive Mishnayas of, of all, and we know Pirkei Avos is all about the Midos of a person. So you see, Rabbi Akiva was a person of Midos, and he was a person who I believe later on in the life you know, basically said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on these five Tamidim. I'm going to hit home on the idea of Zet, Klau, Gadol, Vatora. And we see this also, we're going, to, we're, we're going to say a pshat in a Gemara in Tanis. The Gemara tells us, on Daf Chafei Amid Beis, Shub Maiseb Rebbe Eliezer. There's another story with respect to Rebbe Eliezer, Shayar Edlif Teva. Rabbi Eliezer was one of the rabbeim of Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi, he won, won, there was a major, major drought in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, he went down to the table, went down to the ark, which means that he was the chazin. And he said 24 blessings. The Gemara earlier in, um, uh, in Tana said that on these, these fast days, that they would add brachos to the Shemona Esrei. So he was the chazin for one of these fast days. And he said all the brachos. He said... The entire elongated um, uh, Shemona Esrei, velo na'ana, and he wasn't answered, meaning the drought continued, and there was no rain. Yared Rabbi Akiva acharav. Rabbi Akiva came in afterwards, meaning he took his place of the Azar. His Rabbi wasn't answered, and he said, Va'amar, avinu malkeinu, my father, my king, ain lo numelech ela'ata. We have no other king, we have no other, um, uh, no other king besides you. First of all, a beautiful pshat in the, lang- in the language of Avinu Malkeinu, which we say. We know that the power of an Av is that if Av, a father, wants to give everything, right? And a Melech has the ability to give everything. But an Av, a father, has the desire but doesn't always have the ability. And a Melech has the ability to give but doesn't always have the desire. So when we come and we beseech HaKadosh Baruch Hu very often for something, what do we say? Avinu Malkeinu, we're trying to mesh both of those midos act as an av to me and act as a melech to me. So Rabbi Akiva gets up. Rabbi Akiva, Acharav, Avinu Malkeinu, Ein Lanu Melech Ala Ata. You, um, our father, our king. We have no king but you. Avinu Malkeinu Lemancha, Rachem Aleinu, our father, our king. For your sake, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, have compassion on us. All of a sudden, the Yarud, the Yardu Geshemin, Geshem began to fall. And then you always have scoffers. Havu Miran and Rabbanan, the rabbis, the other people that were there, they started murmuring, they started talking against Rabbi Eliezer. And they said, right? They were talking about Rabbi Eliezer. How could how could it be that your Talmud was ans- was asked, was was um, answered, and all of a sudden rain starts, but you weren't, and you're the Rabbi. All of a sudden, Yatzabaskova Amra, a heavenly voice came out and said, No, no, no. Be careful what you say, and be careful there's a reason. Lo It's not because Rabbi Akiva is greater than Rabbi Eliezer. It's because this one, Rabbi Akiva, is Mavir Al Midosa. He's more forgiving. He's more of a forgiving person. Whereas the other one, Rabbi Eliezer, he's more exacting in his um uh, in the way he goes around his um uh, the way he goes around his his life. So I I would say that that as as this Mida and this approach of Rabbi Akiva became more prominent as he got older. And after this life-altering event, he almost adjusted his, he adjusted his, his, his approach. And that's why he's in Mavr al-Midosav. He, he, and he outclasses, to a certain extent, Rabbi Eliezer in that, um, uh, in that Gemara. And the final, the final thing that we'll, we'll, we'll focus on is that the Gemara at the very end of Sota says that once Rabbi Akiva died, Kavod HaTorah also left. Honor and respect for Torah also ended in the world. There was never a figure in, in history that matched the, I guess, the extreme importance of Rabbi Akiva, who I, I think the word is kavod, that attached both 
in, in word and in deed to Kavod Torah. That Rabbi Akiva, his, his, his zeal for Kavod Torah is un, it, it can be now understood, I guess, in light of this horrific, um, uh, the horrific experience with his with his Tamid. It was the Kavod, the Kavod of the blending of the knowledge hator, of Torah and also of the Midos. The Kavod, I don't, I don't think, is, is just a word that, 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 that Chazal used. I think it's a very, very dafka. It, the word is very, very, um, uh, it was Bikavana that the word Kavod HaTorah was used. So we've answered all our questions, right? We've answered all our questions. Um, uh, he's Zekhal Gadol Batora, right? No, I think that that happened later, right? He, it happened after the death. He became the the, the Klal Gadol Batora personality, right? And why the pairs? Because that was the original educational philosophy was to was to push them and to motivate them. Does it not seem fair? Of course, it was fair. You couldn't have the greatest Torah giants of the world be people whose, whose Talmud Torah and scholarship far outweighed their, their knowledge. And we saw the beautiful explanation from, the, in the, um, uh, from Rav Kestenbaum in the, Olam, in the Olam Hamidos. The only question we've yet to answer is, why Dafka between Pesach and, and Shavuos? And I think this answer is clear. Shavuos is the Chag. Shavuos is the Chag of Kabbalah Torah of our acceptance of the Torah. And we know that Derech Eretz is Kadma Torah. That, that Midos, Derech Eretz, being a mensch, is Kavod Torah. That's a prerequisite for Torah. Something has to come before the Torah. And what's that? That's Midos. And therefore, right, they died there because they, 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 they had to die during this time between Pesach and, and, and Shavuos. Why? Because they weren't Roy. It wasn't appropriate for them to um, uh, for them to almost accept the Torah with, 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 the, um, uh, with the Midos that didn't match. And therefore, for, from that, we, there's a Minog actually nowadays to, to study a parak of, of Pirkei Avos. There's usually six weeks between, um, between Pesach and Shavuos. And there's a Minog to learn, to learn um, one parak of Pirkei Avos every single week because Pirkei Avos is the one Mesech in all of Shas that's not halachically centered, right? it's not halachically focused. But it is midos focused. It's char- It's, it's an, an, an personal refinement and 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 and, your, and a person's character. So we build up towards Kabbalah Sato. We're learning Pirkei Avos between Pesach and Shua, so that will be that we in our midos and our binodim lechavero will be ready to accept the um uh, the, the Torah. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed staring at myself and uh, and talking to myself and learning. But I hope people enjoy the the, the video. And um, uh, I'm always here for questions if you want to email me or anything. But um, if we don't learn, if I don't think we're going to have a shear again before Pesach, we should have a, a wonderful, wonderful Pesach. Everyone should be healthy and we should um, uh, be able to learn in person once again, Bekarov, Bekarov Mamish, and have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos and have a wonderful, wonderful Pesach. Bye-bye.